security and those who knew, they say, procedures were lax but did nothing about it. Reporting live, John London, WWT News Bob. All right, John, thank you. One man who would have been charged has died. Another is going to face trial next month. Fifteen other people were wounded by the gunfire at the club that night. Well, the first honor flight of the year is underway. Local veterans in Washington, D.C., and we were there for the big send-off. I made it because I just really like to make signs and I really love veterans. <laughs> the celebration and the veterans telling their stories, that's still ahead. Plus, Prince William FaceTiming with Lady Gaga, what the two have in common and why they want it made public. Love this here. A San Diego Padres rookie hits his first home run of the major league career, and then he's going to get the silent treatment from his teammates in the dugout. So watch this. Alan Cordoba, 21-year-old rookie from Panama, pinch hitting, smokes the liner, it's gone. Then he comes to the dugout, and he gets the silent treatment. Why? So he just fakes it. He just fakes it. Got, <laughs> it's just kind of a baseball tradition, Cherie. Okay. Just to kind of, you know, because he's a rookie and all, and he uses the imagination, the high fives, and the fist bumps. He's getting into it. Teammates finally let him off the hook and give him the proper greeting. Welcome to the major leagues. And here's another look at the homers. We go to break on Cincinnati's <laughs> WLWT News 5. And that one is going to sail out of here. Station. You're watching WLWT News 5, leading the way. Well, tonight, a special flight. Dozens of veterans and their escorts are visiting the nation's capital. Yeah, we really just love bringing you their stories year after year. For one father and son, this trip, though, is a moment of a lifetime. WLWT News 5's Natalie Clark introduces you to them and shows you why nothing was going to keep them from this honor flight. 72 veterans from the tri-state area are on today's honor flight and many of them tell me they have never visited our nation's capital and they're very much looking forward to seeing all the memorials. It's a send off to remember for these veterans. It's just an honor to be uh, recognized for the service. A ceremony in their honor. Time gone by, yeah, it's a long time, and now a lot of my friends also went yeah. on the honor flight too. So it's, it's a, an exciting thing for us both. The both of us is veteran Ben Lichtenfeld and his son who is joining him on this honor flight to our nation's capital. But for this World War II veteran, the send-off is also a trip down memory lane. Well, I was 19 years old, and I enlisted when I was 17, right out of high school. The now 91-year-old recently had surgery, but his son says that wasn't going to stop this veteran from the trip of a lifetime. He's recovering well, and uh, said, hey, time's getting short. It's like, uh, let's get out there and do this. The veterans will be honored in ceremonies and will visit the memorials to their sacrifices. While here back home, even the smallest of citizens hold signs and give thanks to those who've served. And I made it because I just really like to make signs and I really love veterans. The flight will return home here to CVG around 10 o'clock tonight. The public is invited to attend the Welcome Home celebration. From CVG, Natalie Clark, WLWT News 5. All right, got to love it. Thank you. The next honor flight, by the way, is May 23rd. And this is really cool, too. The trip is at no cost to our veterans. Britain's Prince William stepping up an awareness campaign on mental health with the help of pop star Lady Gaga. Yeah, so the two chatting on FaceTime about the benefits of speaking out and getting help. In fact, Prince William praised the superstar singer for opening up about her own struggles. I read your, your open letter you wrote the other day and I thought it was incredibly moving and very brave of you to write um, down, you know, such personal feelings. But there's a lot of shame attached to mental illness. You feel like something is wrong with you. Everybody has mental health and that we, sh we shouldn't be ashamed of it. And, and that just having a conversation with a friend or family member can really make such a difference. Even though it was hard, it was the best thing that could come out of my mental illness was to share it with other people. 
Yeah, kudos to both of them, right? So as we told you yesterday, Prince William's younger brother, Prince Harry, had another candid interview earlier this week. He spoke about the pain of losing his mother, of course, Princess Diana, 20 years ago, and how he got counseling just a few years ago because of it. New fun for Snapchat users. The app has launched new 3D lenses that add things like sparkling rainbows, fields of flowers, and text phrases to images and videos shot on cell phones. Snapchat first introduced filters about a year and a half ago. Of course, your teenage kids know all about this. Adding things like animal ears, which we see all the time, flower crowns, and quickly became popular with all of the users. The company, by the way, worth about $23 billion. Cincinnati's certified most accurate forecast. I tell you what, it literally feels like Mother Nature is snapping his or her fingers and changing everything just that quickly out there. We had a beautiful day, and then here within the past hour or so, clouds have rolled in, and if you look way off in the distance here, you've got the deck of clouds, and then beneath that, almost kind of the curtains you see hanging. Those are showers creeping their way up across parts of northern Kentucky at this hour. It's 73 degrees right now at the airport. We've got a nice balmy breeze out of the south. At the moment, our air is relatively dry. You know, it's pretty comfortable out. That's going to change this evening. A matter of fact, that dew point that's at 49 is going to shoot up towards 60. It'll probably be in the upper 50s by the time you join us for News 5 at 11 tonight, and you'll start to feel the change in the air across the area. It's been a beautiful day. It's 75 up in Mason, pushing 80 in Westchester. Sharonville's at 78. Oh, let's drop south of the river. 74 in Florence. It's 75 along the river here in Dale High. 74 out there in Lawrenceburg at this hour as well. Here comes those showers. A matter of fact, I showed you on Tower Cam. These are the showers we just looked at, creeping their way up towards the uh, split there in the southern part of Boone County. This isn't going to be terribly heavy, but probably a few sprinkles. Very brief shower. Uh, probably not even enough to really wet the roadway too much out there, but we're going to see these on the increase as we go through the dinner time hours and overnight tonight. Occasionally we'll get in on a couple of showers here or there across the area. Temperatures area wide, well, pushing 80 for many of us. It's 79 in Seedman, Batavia at 79, oh, 76 up in Springboro, 75 right now over around Batesville. So it won't be a washout of an evening or terribly wet around here, but just know you'll probably encounter a few showers, maybe even on a smaller chance, a rumble of thunder. But I think most of what we'll see this evening will generally be confined to isolated shower activity. All right, here's a look at the satellite and radar. You can see that frontal system I was telling you yesterday that had parked itself down across southern parts of Kentucky. You can now see it's lifting its way back to the north. And here's a look at future casts. Again, not a lot of rain tonight, but a stray shower or two, maybe a stray rumble of thunder is certainly possible. And then as we get into the day on Wednesday, I don't expect a lot of rain tomorrow either, but I do think we'll run the threat for at least a few pop up showers or maybe a stray storm during the afternoon hours. It still looks like Thursday is really going to be the day for us. Thursday is the day to watch for the potential of some strong, the severe storms, and those will begin to roll in here just behind the banner late Thursday afternoon and evening. So for tonight, a couple of stray showers around mild, only around 60 for an overnight low. And then for tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a few scattered showers around. Still going to be quite mild. We'll make our way close to 80 in the upper 70s. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. 80 on Thursday for the warmest day of the week and the best chance of seeing widespread soaking rains and maybe even some strong to severe storms. And then it still looks like a cold rain for the weekend. Saturday shred day is looking very wet out there on Saturday afternoon before sunshine returns on Sunday. All right, Cap, thank you. Blast off a rocket launch from Cape Canaveral, the first of its kind view NASA offered and the rocket's mission. Plus stolen puppy, a six year old loses his best friend and wait until you hear how the heist was pulled off and see oh, the happy reunion. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT News 5. One. Zero and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket with Cygnus. Always fascinating, right? A special treat today for space buffs and beachgoers down in Florida. The Atlas V rocket taking about 8,000 pounds of supplies to the International Space Station. Good setting to watch all of that. For the first time, NASA broadcasting a 360 degree view of the launch from Cape Canaveral, meaning online viewers could move the camera angle and choose their view. The rocket will reach the space station on Saturday. New video released of a police cruiser crashing into another car. This is 
uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico here. The patrol car was speeding into an intersection when it slams right into another car Ooh, with a woman and two children inside. The officer was headed to a violent felony in progress. His emergency lights were on at the time of the crash. All four were taken to the hospital. A California surf instructor saves a starving sea lion pup in the video is just adorable as you could imagine. Calder Nold was checking the surf there in Santa Cruz. How about this? He spotted the tiny exhausted little sea lion struggling in the water with eight foot swells. The tiny pup was not able to make it to dry land and that is when Nold put the pup on the surfboard and brought it to the beach while waiting for someone from the Marine Mammal Center to get there. The sea lion pup cuddled up against Nold and took in the sun rays. All right, speaking of adorable here, a very happy ending for a six-year-old little boy whose 12-week-old German Shepherd puppy was stolen. So Zach Neiden uh and his father were playing with their puppy named Odin in the yard. Uh, this is in Spokane, Washington, in their home there. They were getting ready to take the dog on a walk, and so they ran inside real quick to just grab the leash, and that's when this guy swoops in, scoops Odin up, and just takes off. The father posted the incident on social media and it didn't take long before a woman reached out saying that she found the dog in the middle of a busy street. Do you know this person? Oh, oh I think you might be too heavy for you. Hey, baby. Oh, 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 we put a leash yeah. because we're not losing thank him. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. So Why do you feel good? Because Odin's back. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's believed whoever took the dog dumped him there just a few, few blocks away. All right, uh, people in a local community want to push out their new neighbors before they even move in. Yeah, so why they're questioning a new recovery home and the reassurance from health officials tonight. Plus, more on the Facebook murder. A McDonald's worker spots the murder suspect in the drive through We're going to tell you about the strategy he used to keep him there and how the manhunt ended next on Cincinnati's WLWT News 5. You're watching WLWT News 5, leading the way. Well, two-day search for the Facebook killer has ended with the suspect now dead. Steve Stevens was accused of killing a man that he found on the streets of Cleveland, a 74-year-old man, and then posting the video of the murder on Facebook. Sarah Dulliff explains how the manhunt ended thanks to an alert employee at McDonald's. One of the country's most wanted, no longer on the run. The uh, search for Steve Stevens has ended. The three-day manhunt for Steve Stevens ended in Erie, Pennsylvania after a worker at a McDonald's drive through recognized him and called police. He couldn't have got more than, I don't know, 100 yards on Buffalo Road before the police were behind him. Following a short chase, law enforcement performed a pit maneuver to stop Stephen's car. The vehicle spun around, came to a stop, immediately he pulled the weapon out, and he shot himself. Stevens had been on the run since Easter Sunday when he recorded himself shooting and killing 74-year-old Robert Godwin, then posted the video to Facebook. Godwin, a father and grandfather, was seemingly picked at random. The horrific crime raised questions about the responsibility of social media outlets when it comes to policing criminal content. This is something that should not have been shared around the world, period. Facebook released a statement saying, we disabled the suspect's account within 23 minutes of receiving the first report, but added, we know we need to do better. Mark Zuckerberg also commented at the company's annual F8 conference. We have a lot of work and we will keep doing all we can uh, to prevent tragedies like this from happening. A manhunt over that promises for change in the future to help other families avoid the grief Robert Godwin's family is now mired in. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. Now we are learning much more about Steve Stevens tonight. An Ohio gun range owner says Stevens was a regular there. Stevens had a concealed carry permit. He posted video online trying out different handguns at an indoor gun range. This is in East Lake. That's just uh, northeast of Cleveland. But the owner says Stevens didn't display any warning signs. And from what I've seen in the videos, he looked to be a very articulate individual. He wouldn't trip your suspicion you know, that he was, you know, nuts that he was going to hurt somebody. 
Stevens did not have a criminal record, but the East Lake gun range owner says it keeps cameras inside and it also reports any suspicious or unsafe behavior to police when needed. Well, the owner of the McDonald's where the worker provided the case cracking tip there in Erie, Pennsylvania, also speaking for the first time this afternoon. He said that he's proud of his crew on how they handled the situation. The owner says that Stevens came through the drive through. He says that the woman working the pay window thought that she recognized him and and his Ohio license plates. So she took his money and called state police. Basically just told him it was going to be a minute for his fries, which it wasn't really. We were just trying to make sure she got in contact with the state police and uh, he didn't want to wait for the fries, which was fine. But he took his six piece and didn't want any money back and headed out onto Buffalo Road. Well, the McDonald's owner says state police caught up with Stevens in about 100 yards from where he was there in the drive through and you can stay on top of the investigation as it develops with the WLWT mobile app. Right now we have briefings with officials as well as raw video footage from the scene where police ended up finding Stevens car. Now another page here in the problem stemming from the addiction epidemic. A controversy is brewing in Claremont County over a new home for those recovering from substance abuse. People who live near this Pierce Township site are now questioning how it's going to change their neighborhood. WLWT News size Brian Hamrick has the story for us. Well, some people here in Pierce Township are concerned about their new neighbors. They don't know who they are yet, but they do know why they'll be living here. It sits along Merwin 10 mile and right in the middle of a controversy. You know, I'm not going to say that all oh, they shouldn't do it, but I'm just saying there are some definite concerns. Doug Ray is like others who live nearby who didn't want to appear on camera, but do have lots of questions about who's moving in next door. How many are they going to have in there? I mean, are they, are they limited on, you know, the amount of people they can have in there? The home was bought by Greater Cincinnati Behavioral Health Services. The CEO there, Jeff O'Neill, tells us the plan is for it to house those on the back end of their recovery from substance abuse. O'Neill says five to seven people who have earned a spot in the home will live there. None will have violent backgrounds, O'Neill says, it will not be a treatment facility. Obviously worried about relapses. The results, you know, how good is it going to be? The Greater Cincinnati Behavioral Health Services says it was asked by Claremont County to provide the home in order for the county to continue to get state money for substance abuse treatment efforts. But for those who live close by, the only rehab they want to see next door is the kind being done to the house. Now, administrators with Pierce Township tell me they're looking into any issues right now, but they say if there's no problem with the zoning, they can't approve or disapprove of the project. Brian Hemrick, WLWT News 5. Greater Cincinnati Behavioral Health Services says it expects to have people living in that home by the end of May. Well, Cincinnati man will spend more than five years in prison after a cocaine bust. Raul Barocio pleaded guilty last April. Seven other people from our area have been sentenced in this drug ring so far. In their plea deals, Barocio admitted to getting the cocaine and then giving it to someone else who then distributed it to street dealers. Well, a man is in trouble in two counties tonight. Kamari Blackwell charged with murder in Kenton County. Police found William Allen from Mason dead in his car in Covington back in October. Well, today, Cincinnati police issued a burglary warrant for Blackwell. They say he kicked in his ex-girlfriend's door in Roll Hill, punched her in the face and then stole her car. Police later found that car in Covington. Now to our state of addiction coverage for you. Kentucky is cracking down on drugged driving. WLWT News Science Andrew Setters shows us the new effort now to arrest people who get behind the wheel while high, high on heroin or other drugs. When it comes to speeding, the rules are crystal clear. Even DUI, cops know exactly when you're over the limit, but drug driving is presenting them with new challenges. We're seeing prescriptions, methamphetamine, cocaine's coming back. Uh, all of these together uh, create a totally different animal than an alcohol impaired driver. This crash in September of 2015 is the moment when the drug driving problem really hit home for Covington Police Specialist Doug Ulrich. A couple years ago, we had a uh, quadruple fatality in Fort Wright, uh, which was caused by a heroin overdose uh, coming down Highland Avenue. Ken Hartsock may have been passed out behind the wheel and hit a car head on. He died and so did three people in the car he hit. This crash on 471 happened a few months later. A traffic camera caught the car as it flipped, killing the driver, injuring a woman and her baby boy. Our jurors expect these test results to say something. 
Bob Stokes with the Kentucky Attorney General's Office is leading a seminar to train Kentucky's police and prosecutors. Making the case against a drug driver is not as simple as getting someone to blow into a breathalyzer, especially if the drugs causing the impairment came from a doctor's office. It's not just, you know, the illicit drugs. I mean, we're talking about drugs that are prescription drugs, and so that's uh, it's a real problem. Um, you know, when people are, you know, are consuming these these substances, you know, and, and to the point where, you know, they don't necessarily always know how it's going to affect them. These police officers and prosecutors will leave here from Covington after two and a half days of training with a lot more information to take home to make cases against people who may be impaired behind the wheel. From Covington, Andrew Setters, WLWT News 5. So police are learning about how to recognize what substances someone might be on and what testing needs to be done. There's also a focus on synthetic drugs and their effects. Police have released new photos of a man accused in a string of burglaries. They say that the man has broken into three businesses downtown and over the Rhine. Police say he's hit 10 times in two months, walking out with anything that he could carry, including big screen televisions. So if you recognize him, give Crime Stoppers a call. Police in Franklin need your help. They're trying to find the burglary suspect. They say he broke into a back door on Victoria Drive last week. Police have identified the suspect as 33 year old Brian Carpenter. They say he stole a wallet and a purse in the early morning hours of April 10th. A man was arraigned this morning in a bank robbery from Westwood. Police say on Friday, Claude Bullock went into the Huntington Bank there right along uh, Harrison Avenue. They say he handed the teller a note saying, give me money, give me all of your money or I will kill you all. Police say Bullock then took off with the money. A judge gave him a $450,000 bond today. All right, so good things happen for those who wait. Big sports news for Cincinnati. March Madness hitting the city in 2022, but it is coming. WLWT Sports Director George Vogel live in the newsroom with the bracket breakdown. Hey, George. Hey there, Mike. Yeah, uh, we've been waiting for sure. This has been a long time coming and a bit of a surprise in my corner of the world. For the first time since 1992, Cincinnati will host first and second round games in the men's NCAA tournament. Basketball has been a rare sight at U.S. Bank Arena in recent years, although the UC Xavier game was played there a couple of times. UC will be the host school for the NCAAs. The arena has hosted the NCAA Hockey Regionals the past couple of seasons, and that no doubt helps Cincinnati get back in the game when it comes to NCAA basketball. In its current state, I can tell you this building needs some work to be a welcoming site for the NCAA tournament. Renovation has been on the back burner, but no one is saying if a renovation is in the works for this. They certainly have time to get renovations completed with the games not coming until 2022, but the money, that's a different story. Clearly, this is worth keeping an eye on. From the newsroom, I'm George Vogel, WLWT News 5. All right, nice to see such a big thing coming our way, right? We're getting more and more in this yeah, city for sure. Exactly. Yeah. All right, well, a state lawmaker found passed out in a fast food parking lot. How prosecutors are reacting after the grand jury decided to drop a felony charge against him. Plus, the University of Kentucky works to improve cancer care. How a huge grant is going to help study how your weight affects your health. And things are changing. If you have plans for outdoors this evening, get ready for a few sprinkles. Not a lot of heavy rain, but don't be surprised if you encounter a shower. This is just the beginnings of what's going to be an increasingly wet weather pattern. I'll discuss the changes that are on the way in the rain, too. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT News 5. You're watching WLWT News 5, leading the way. An Ohio State representative now indicted for driving under the influence. Wes Rutherford was found passed out in his car at a Liberty Township, Liberty Township McDonald's last month. WLWT News 5's Alexis Rogers explaining why Rutherford will not face a more serious felony charge, why it was dropped. There's a guy passed out in the drive thru in his truck. His truck is running as well. And he's in the drive thru? Uh-huh, he's in the driver's seat. Butler County Sheriff's deputies arrested State Representative Wes Rutherford in March. They say his speech was slurred, eyes bloodshot, and he had a loaded gun on one of his seats. He was charged with OVI, a misdemeanor, and improperly handling a firearm, a felony. No comment at this time. Rutherford hasn't said anything since his arrest. Today, a grand jury indicted Rutherford on the DUI charge. And he's already lost his driving privileges at his first court appearance. And right now, you do not have a driver's license, so do not drive anywhere. You have someone take you, okay? Yes, sir. 
but the grand jury declined to indict him on the firearm felony. Butler County Prosecutor Michael Mosier released a statement saying Rutherford was treated, quote, no better or worse than the law provides. Mosier added, quote, there were no additional aggravating circumstances regarding the firearm to justify more serious consideration. Mr. Rutherford has paid a price of public censure and condemnation far beyond the power of the courts to impose. Mosier says Rutherford's indictment for driving drunk and the felony case against him is now officially closed. He says his office will no longer be commenting any further. In the newsroom, Alexis Rogers, WLWT News 5. If Rutherford had been convicted of a felony, he would have lost his position as a state representative. Okay, here's a warning for you tonight. If you drive a Subaru, some newer models now being recalled because of a fuel problem, it can make the engine stall out without even warning you. This impacts the 2017 Impreza. Subaru says a winter blend of fuel can turn a vapor in the fuel line, causing the engine to run rough and then stall out and increasing the risk of a crash. The University of Kentucky received a multi-million dollar grant to study the links between obesity and cancer. UK says the more than $11 million grant is going to fund its Center for Cancer and Metabolism over the next five years. Kentucky U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell says he worked to secure the grant to improve state health care. So, so we see this as a real opportunity to, to focus efforts on better understanding factors that, that affect obesity-related cancers and, and really hopefully to be able to attack those cancers via, via metabolic uh, means. Kentucky has one of the nation's highest rates of both obesity and certain kinds of cancer. Have some breaking news right now for you. Human remains have been found in South Fairmount. Police are telling us workers found the skeletal remains while working near the intersection of State Avenue and Beekman. Police are treating it right now just as a death investigation, though they are not sure of the circumstances surrounding this person's death. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers' former owner laid to rest today. Dan Rooney died at the age of 84. His family held a private funeral mass in Pittsburgh. Current and former Steelers attending the ceremony, along with political leaders, including former President Obama, John Kerry, and Eric Holder. Our sister station there in Pittsburgh spoke with Rooney's parish priest about the tradition he had of going to church. He was there faithfully every day, uh, just quietly sitting there participating, uh, joyful, and it was obvious that that set the focus for his day. Now, the priest says that Rooney went to church every morning at 730, no matter how the Steelers were playing at the time, a little sense of humor with it. His father founded the team, Rooney's father founded the team back in 1933. A burial followed the private funeral. Cincinnati's certified most accurate forecast. Well, you know what these green blobs mean creeping their way up from south to north across Kentucky tonight. These are isolated showers and even a few storms down here to the south of Lexington and Louisville. This is what's going to be moving up towards the Ohio River here over the next couple of hours. So if you have evening plans, don't be surprised if you encounter a few showers. Now, I don't expect for it to be terribly wet this evening, and I don't think everyone will even see rain. However, there could be a brief passing shower if you have plans to do anything outdoors. I know there's baseball along the river tonight. They'll get the game in, but there could be a very brief intermittent shower or two. A matter of fact, as we look south across the Ohio River into Newport and Covington, in the distance there, you can actually see some of those showers over the horizon. Right now, the airport, 73 degrees. We've got a balmy breeze out of the south at this hour. Temperatures warmed up nicely today. It's 80 right now in Batavia, 76 in Springboro and Mason, 77 up there in Connorsville at this hour in the low 70s along the Ohio River. Check out Dry Ridge though at 68. Yeah, they had a shower come through there and that's what's creeping its way up the uh, Interstate 71 and 75 tonight. I was going to say in the direction of the Ohio River here, but here's some of those showers pushing up towards Critton and now over towards the 71 75 split. These showers north of Williamstown over towards Falmouth at this hour along 27 and they even extend in the parts of Boone County. They're beginning to approach the Ohio River to the west of Dale High. So overall, expect a few spotty showers over the next couple of hours, and those will likely continue at least to some degree off and on overnight. That's because there's a warm front down there to the south of Louisville and Lexington that's lifting in our direction. Eventually, later on this week, it's going to team up with a storm system that's out to our west, and the two will combine.
line on Thursday to bring us our best threat for widespread showers and thunderstorms and maybe even some stronger uh, thunderstorm activity. Until then, it's spotty, intermittent, very brief showers. I don't expect a lot of rain tonight, nor do I expect a lot of rain during the day on Wednesday. I do expect a lot of clouds tomorrow, but there will be some sun peaks in between. And again, we'll keep the threat for a brief passing shower at almost any time. But again, really Thursday is going to be the day to watch in terms of widespread shower and thunderstorm activity, especially late Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. You can see just the beginnings of some of those storms moving in. So again, not a terribly wet night, but you could encounter a stray shower or 260 for an overnight low. It's going to stay very mild for this time of the year. 78 for tomorrow. Despite the clouds, we're still going to remain quite warm, almost 80 with a few scattered showers across the area. Here's a look at your day planner. 62 at 8 a.m. There could be a quick brief shower to start your day up to 71 by lunchtime and then into the middle and upper 70s during the afternoon. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. 80 on Thursday for the warmest day of the week, thus the threat for some stronger storms in there. But then it looks like we'll get a little break Thursday night, but more rain in here by Friday and some of that rain Friday into Saturday could be quite a soaker there for those of you making weekend plans before sunshine. Maybe we'll spare the tail end of the weekend with sunshine returning on Sunday. When you say spare, hope to spare the end of the weekend. That <laughs> yeah. doesn't sound great. Still ahead at six o'clock, a long way to go for a high school standout. Yeah, the emotional update now for an elder alums family after he dove into a shallow pool and the progress he's making. But first, a lesson in how energy companies keep the power on the special visitors to local classrooms. Yeah, it's National Lineman Day today when we come back. And not football. Cincinnati's WLWT News 5. In case you didn't know, Today is National Lineman Appreciation Day, and linemen from Duke Energy, not the Bengals, use the day to make a big difference. Yeah, so linemen volunteered their time today to read to the kids at three Kenton County schools. We caught up with them here at River Ridge Elementary. This is an independent lineman also showing the kids their gear and answering questions about working in energy. It's a dangerous job, and they share their stories with the kids today. Also tonight, a Kentucky dachshund had a close call this week, but thanks to a crew of firefighters, she's back on solid ground. Gracie the dachshund fell 30 <laughs> feet into a well in Rineville, Kentucky. Her owner called 911 when she couldn't reach Gracie with a ladder. Firefighters, though, from two different departments came to Gracie's rescue, and less than an hour later, Gracie safely back with her owner. And by the time we figured out the ladder wasn't going to work. I called 911. Oh, she didn't bark or cry or nothing. She was just standing there looking up at us. Gracie was a little shaken up, but the firefighters say she was not hurt at all, looking cute as can be. <laughs> I love the tutu. A police department is going viral with its new video now about sharing the love with free donuts. All we ask is that you don't disrespect, don't discriminate, don't harass, and don't hate. <laughs> I sound like that on the news once in a while. The police departments in central Iowa offering free donuts for good choices through a social media campaign. One would be to not talk with your mouth full of food, by the way. More than a quarter of a million people, though, have watched the video so far. All right, next at 6 o'clock, continuing coverage after the Facebook killer was spotted and then killed himself. Plus, new at 6 o'clock, a deteriorating building causing big concerns. The old paper company, some are calling a safety hazard and what could be next for that building. Plus, the family of a man killed in the cameo shootout wants money and changes why the victim's family says the city should be held accountable. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT. A 14 year old accused of killing her father. The fight tonight on whether to try the girl as an adult. The nationwide manhunt for the Facebook killer is over. At that time, Stevens used a handgun to take his own life. How police tracked down Steve Stevens and how it all ended. This is WLWT News 5, leading the way. All right, and we are going to get to that major breaking news story, but first, some breaking news here locally. Human remains have been found in South Fairmount, and good evening to you. I'm Sheree Palello. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Mike Dardis. WLWT News 5's Amanda Kelly live near the intersection of State Avenue and Beekman with the breaking details. Amanda? <laughs> 
Well, Mike and Sheree, I just got off the phone with Cincinnati police. They say that a work crew discovered human remains right behind me here underneath the Western Hills Viaduct earlier this afternoon. Now, right now we have the Hamilton County Coroner and Cincinnati's homicide unit here on scene. You might be able to see some of their white vehicles uh, parked behind here on the scene gathering evidence. At this point, there's really very little details uh, at the time. Police can tell us they're calling this a death investigation. Really right now there is nothing that indicates foul play, but they are investigating to determine the circumstances and figure out exactly why these human remains were found here and exactly who they may belong to. And of course, we'll continue to follow up with this story and bring you the very latest details just as soon as they become available. But right now, all Cincinnati police can tell us that that human remains were found and this is a death investigation. Reporting live in South Fairmount, Amanda Kelly, WLWT News 5. All right, Amanda, thank you. The nationwide search is now over for Steve Stevens. It ends in Pennsylvania. A McDonald's manager giving credit now to one of his employees. So this ends a terrifying nearly 48 hours as police search for the Cleveland Facebook killer. WLWT News 5's Mark Hayes is here now with today's details. Mark? Mike and Cherie, good evening. Authorities praise the media for their relentless coverage in getting Steve Stevens' picture out to the community. It was a tip at an eerie McDonald's that led police to a brief chase and the end of this frightening ordeal. Well, I came through drive through um, uh, placed an order, got to the first window where he pay and uh, the drive through employee that was working at the time recognized him or thought uh, noticed that the car was Ohio tags on it and it was a white fusion and uh, took his money and he pulled to the next window. Meanwhile, she stepped out of there and called the state police right away. From there, police moved in. Not long after, the man known as the Facebook killer, Steve Stevens, took his own life with a self-inflicted gunshot wound in Erie, Pennsylvania. That's about 100 miles outside of Cleveland. Cleveland authorities were already nearby checking Erie due to a cell phone ping. We did have people actually on the ground in, in that area on several occasions looking at not only the surrounding area, but that immediate area for the ping. That Erie County McDonald's was not far from a state police barracks. Authorities responded to the tip quickly and the pursuit began, but it didn't last long. We knew that Mr. Stevens uh, was wanted for homicide from Cleveland. We knew he could be a threat to our troopers, but also to members of the public. That trooper used his discretion did the pit maneuver and did it successfully ending this investigation. Pennsylvania police say when officers performed that pit maneuver, one of their troopers witnessed Stevens pulling out his weapon and taking his own life, ending a frightening ordeal that had much of the Midwest on edge. Major Tipper praised the media's role in the outcome. Probably the result we had today was because of the coverage of it. Concerned citizen sees him, recognizes not only him but the car, uh, and that's why we're here today. Now, Pennsylvania State Police are still on scene with the chase ended processing the vehicle. They don't know how long he may have been in the area. And in the meantime, Cleveland's police chief and mayor say they are doing everything they can to comfort the Godwin family and keep them informed. Mark Hayes, WLWT News 5. All right, Mark, thank you. The 14 year old who called 911 to say that she had shot her father was back in court today. The Hamilton teenager's attorney fighting to keep her case in juvenile court. WLWT News 5's Karen Johnson live for us with the details on this. Karen. And Mike, today the teen waived a probable cause hearing. That means she agrees there's enough evidence that a crime was committed and the case can now move forward. She will now be evaluated by a psychologist. Then come June, a judge could decide whether the case stays here in juvenile court or she gets tried as an adult. Wearing her hair in a bun and a jail uniform, the 14-year-old who we are not identifying walked into court. Eight family members sat behind her with pained looks on their faces. She's you know, a 14 year old child and is digesting the process, you know, as as each week and hearing goes by. The Hamilton freshman is charged with aggravated murder. In February, she made this 911 call from her home. Can somebody come and put me in handcuffs? Why? Oh 71 year old James Ponder died at the scene. Investigators say his daughter used a nine millimeter semi automatic handgun and shot her father in the head. You understand there has been a motion filed to send this to the adult court. Prosecutors want the teen tried as an adult. Before the judge can rule, the teen will undergo a psychological evaluation. One question no one has answered yet 
What was the teen's motive for allegedly shooting her dad? That's still a question. Can't, can't discuss the, the evidence or the allegations or any conversations with the client. And in deciding whether to keep the case here in juvenile court or send it over to common pleas court, the judge will consider several factors, and some of those include uh, looking at the doctor's assessments and also any past contacts with the court. Reporting live in Hamilton tonight, Karen Johnson, WLWT News 5. All right, Karen, thank you. We are told the teenager has never been in trouble with the law before. The family of Cameo Club shooting victim O'Brien Spike speaking out today, indicating they intend to file a lawsuit. They gathered in Eden Park with attorneys today to ask anyone in the community with information to come forward and provide that information. Just over three weeks ago, their 27-year-old family member was killed when gunfire erupted inside the dance club. It resulted in two deaths and 15 injuries in the nation's worst mass shooting this year. The family says this has left a terrible void in their lives. And he took care of us. He, he did everything for us, so it's tragic for us. So we just can't, we have to get to the bottom of this. We just can't not just let it go, and not just for him, for anybody else. You should be able to go and have a birthday drink without getting killed. Family members put strong emphasis today on finding out how guns were able to be brought into the Cameo Club. They say unless that is known, there's no way of preventing a tragedy like this from happening again. A mayoral candidate stood right outside the Cameo Club today to talk about his approach to violent crime. WLWT News Vice John London lie there now for us with a look at how safety factors into May, the May 2nd vote. Hi, John. Yeah, Sheree, the th three candidates in the primary use a lot of the same language when they talk about safety on the campaign trail. To many, the differences do not seem that stark. Two weeks out from the May primary, the race to catch John Cranley on the violent crime front is in full stride. We have to do something different. His fellow Democrats and primary opponents, Yvette Simpson and Rob Richardson, are suggesting Cranley's not doing enough to corral crime. Today, Richardson used the former Cameo nightclub location as a backdrop to say he'd upgrade security, improve the witness protection program, and reinvest and in SERVE, the ground-level intervention effort. We know we have to target high-risk individuals, high-risk youth that are most likely to commit the crimes, but make sure as we're doing that, we're giving them opportunities to be employed. The incumbent mayor counters his opponent's ideas are sound, and he's already doing them putting more officers on the street, putting the shot spotter system in place. But he also points to investment in job training, what he calls a hard, soft approach. Simpson has a different way of defining it. It takes the hood to save the hood. We can't have a top-down approach. We need to work within communities. While drawing distinctions with each other, Simpson and Richardson are each trying to show early voters there's a more effective way than the Cranley way. May 2nd could come down the style points. If she were to start supporting putting more cops in the street, we could we could do more faster. But we will continue to make sure that we have a, a, a priority of putting more cops in the street. That's why the police have endorsed my campaign, because they know that, that, that I've got their back and they know that I'm focused on safety. And with those early FOP and firefighter endorsements, Cranley seems confident that he's not all that vulnerable in the upcoming primary when it comes to the topic of safety. Reporting live, John London, WWT News 5. So of the three candidates in the mayoral primary, one will fall by the wayside on May 2nd. The surviving two will then be in the runoff this coming fall. A Lachlan man remains behind bars on a charge of rape tonight. Court documents show Christopher Tate allegedly forced a woman to have sex with him in his bathroom. Last week, the victim told police the 37-year-old slammed her against uh, the bathroom mirror before the assault. A judge set his bond today at $50,000. An elder high school grad and Wright State basketball star critically hurt at a party in Oxford more than a week ago, and now he's going to soon be headed to Chicago. WLWT News 5's Dan Griffin is live to explain why. Plus, he has an update on Ryan Custer's progress from his parents. Dan? 
Yeah, Mike, uh, Ryan's parents were very emotional this afternoon as they shared some of the new details with us. They say he's had a lot of big improvements, but he has a long way to go as well. His father says that Ryan has been through several surgeries following his traumatic head injury at a party in Oxford more than a week ago. He says fragments of his vertebrae were removed. Part of it was shaved off. He also says Ryan has had improvements in his touch and movement and can feel his fingers. But below the waist, the biggest improvement is that he's felt his parents rub the top of his feet. We learned Ryan leaves Friday morning for Chicago to be considered for a stem cell study at Rush University, where he'll be evaluated, hopefully be accepted, receive an injection, and then go to an inpatient rehab facility. Just continue the prayers for him. The more prayers we have, maybe God will answer our prayers and give him the healing that he needs. Now, Ryan's parents say the only answer they've really been able to get out of all of this is that hopefully he will be an inspiration for others. We're live at UC Medical Center. Dan Griffin, WLWT News 5.